as not really being the organizing teacher. I didn't, you know, have any connections to Cuba. I didn't do any of the, you know, the floor planning or anything like that. I had the itinerary and I was showing up to, you know, be a supervising chaperone. So I was more, you know, happily and luckily along for the ride. I tried to imagine it before we went to Cuba, but there's no possible way that you could ever imagine something like that. It's so different, it's so diverse from what we have. Uh, it's, just, it's another world. Hello! Welcome to Glen Eagle Music Tour 101. It started out as a getaway and then morphed into a breakaway. Cuba was a tropical playground, but we weren't ready for the rap that was face up next. It was a precious moment because no, it seems that no matter what culture we are, the music still gets to us. We, we're still kids, we still dance, we still share similarities. You oh, I love the dancing. Yeah, the, it's just they, like they, spontaneous they, they, dances they, and... They have this big emphasis on just... I didn't expect us to get along that well at first, but like I said, um, they were exactly like us, so I was yeah, very shocked and happy. Like I said, so. It's really heartwarming to see uh, the students all um, you know, interacting with one another, having so much fun, and not just sharing music together, but you know, playing games and trying to communicate and exchanging emails, and uh, it was just really heartwarming. It was a uh, very emotional experience for, for for many of us, not just the uh, students, but for the adults watching. You know, it was um, you know, it was uh, it was a great thing to see. It was such an amazing feeling meeting those kids and seeing how how different their lives are but how similar they are to us at the same time. There's just little bits and pieces of you know either Western or North American culture that have made it in. You know, like the Justin Bieber stuff and uh, Rihanna and, you know, some of the kids at that school had like, you know, smartphones and like just clothes that you could tell were like smuggled in and stuff like that. And I think, uh, uh, like, well, when you were playing uh, the Mario Brothers theme song and like all the kids in the room, you know, knew the tune to Mario Brothers. Like, I can't imagine where they would be playing video games in Cuba based on the stuff that we saw that people seemed to have, but they know Mario Brothers. And you know, you played the little like the the dungeon sort of like da 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 da, -da and then everyone was like, oh my god! <laughs> that just one of those things like shot through somehow, and Cubans know about that. doing is they've never heard this, they've never seen this music before, and so they've just gotten it, and they're sight singing it, so they're changing all of the words, and the actual song is in Gaelic, so they're changing all the words to solfege, which is do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, da, and they're singing it through, and he's going around correcting them, and then I'm assuming they'll add the Gaelic in later. Well, for one, their ability to sight read was fantastic, like, they had that song for 20 minutes, and if you... They're, they're, Mr. Jackson, I think, has a video of it, and if you listen to it, it's ridiculous. They're like, they sound great. And I remember I was I was doing the soprano part, and I was having so much trouble, because um, I can't sight read words and notes at the same time. 
So I was like trying to do both and yeah, that wasn't working very well. So I think I I, I know that I had a, I had a lot of I felt again really comparatively quite inadequate. <laughs> Steven? Oh, it was great. We were all sight, sight singing together and the, the, spa, the, the Cuban boy kept winking at me. It was fantastic. <laughs> the lyrics were written in like the Spanish version of English. Like the, like the literal translation as it would come to them. So I was trying to figure out what was going on and they were trying to figure out what was going on and it was really great. <laughs> My friend, we kept telling them how to pronounce things and they'd laugh. What do I do? <laughs> it's one of those things, three days in a place like this is like a month. Eight days will probably feel like a little bit longer. So what did you take away from Cuba? Uh, mainly that you, you have to treat people with respect no matter what in order to get respect. And just putting a smile on your face can really change someone's day. And just having a positive attitude. Uh, the value of making an effort. Like the connection through people isn't quite just through language. There's so many different types of people in the world, but we're all the same. Family and friends make you happy. So. You know, your job every day shouldn't be to satisfy all those things that stress you out. It should be to, you know, make yourself and the people around you comfortable and happy and welcome. And I think that's something that I won't forget very soon.